Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email me, tmosso at thewatchbox.com. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any Watchbox platform, please reach out to me directly. Email tmosso at thewatchbox.com for pricing details. Today, we're discussing a lovely and full-figure discontinued white gold Rolex Oyster Perpetual Day Day 2. This is reference 218239, 41mm in diameter. It is a watch that was made as part of the Day Day 2 family between 2008 and 2015, after which they were discontinued for the Day Day 40s. So the watch is 12mm thick in addition to 41mm in diameter, from lug tip to lug tip, 49.5mm, and from end link to end link across the President bracelet, 53.1 millimeters with a 21 millimeter spacing between the lugs. The watch wears well on my wrist, though I wouldn't wear it on a much smaller wrist than mine. I believe that because the President bracelet on the Date 8 II features solid end links as opposed to the hinge end links of the Date 840, this is a watch that needs to be worn on a wrist of at least 15 centimeters circumference. Any smaller, and you want to look at a 39 or 36 millimeter Date 8. It is flat, however, and with a sloped bezel, it slides easily underneath a dress cuff. All in white gold, I'm impressed. Not so much that Rolex used white gold, but that a gold Rolex feels like a platinum watch from any other brand, and there are some reasons for that. Solid end links, solid center links, thick gauge clasps, and solid case backs. Sapphire weighs nothing. This is like having a gold dollar on the reverse of your watch. So. Solid, redoubtable, confidence-inspiring. The bracelet is called the President Bracelet. It bowed with the original reference 6511 back in the mid-50s, back in 1956, when the Day Date was new. So while the watch is often nicknamed the President because of its illustrious ownership history, the bracelet properly is called the President, and it's a great one. The profiles of the links are small, so it has the silky, supple feel of the Jubilee, but then it's a three-link design, so you don't have a lot of small links moving around, so it has the solidity that you find in the Oyster Sports Bracelet, plus it has better ventilation on the wrist than the Oyster, so it's really the best of all worlds. There's a conforming end link, there's a little bit of taper, it is present, outer faces are polished, center links are polished, flanking links are satinated, and removable links on both sides are fixed by screws. We have the crown clasp, famed because it is the only visible sign of the partition point between the two halves of the bracelet, lifted up, this is very much a super president of the modern generation because it has a little latch that moves up and down, and that latch hooks up so that it locks closed. You have to lift it, slide it, unlock it, and then open it. It's not friction fit, so it gives you a lot more security on the wrist than previous generations of the president bracelet. Now, because it is white gold, it's not quite as blindingly white as silver or platinum. Rolex has its own foundry, it makes its own cases, clasps, and bracelets, and it makes its own alloys. Rolex white gold is white all the way through. It's what is called gray gold in the industry. So gray gold is a little bit warmer than rhodium-plated white gold, but unlike rhodium-plated white gold, it never needs to be replated, and if scratched, there isn't a different color underneath. So gray gold is what you want to see. It's what, for example, Chagère, Lecoultre, and Patek Philippe use. We have a beautifully faceted bezel that shows no evidence of having ever been refinished. It's as sharp as the day it left Geneva. We have a twin lock crown in gold, you know, because a twin lock crown in gold has two symmetrical dots. Screw down crown, 100 meter water resistance, a lovely metallic brown sunburst style. We have a little railroad track outboard for reading the minutes, and if you look carefully, you can see that there are little tiny triple indices outboard of each numeral. And then we have faceted baton style hands, Roman numerals in white gold, along with the hands and the Rolex crown, the idea being that white gold will not tarnish over time, and they're nicely color keyed to the case and the bezel. We have a watchmaker's four rather than a standard Roman numeral four, and it is of course a day and a date, so it has both. There's a hacking seconds function, there's also a double quick set, so you can rapidly quick set the date, but then you can also rapidly quick set the day. It is a double quick set. And the Cyclops Eye Magnifier fits better on the bigger Rolex watches, which is nice here because it doesn't seem to crown out the dial, but it's still very practical as a date magnifier. Solid case back, oyster case, but you already know that. We talked about it earlier. Inside we have Rolex Caliber 3156, which is a version of the Date 836 movement that has bigger discs, for example, for the day and the date, and Rolex's proprietary Powerflex shock protection system. Caliber 3156 was only ever used on the Date 82. 
Automatic winding with bidirectional winding action. It has the double quick set in the hacking seconds, a 48 hour power reserve, 31 pivot joules. It beats weight 8 beats per second. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer. It has a full balance bridge and a free sprung index to make the watch easy to adjust precisely, but also very shock tolerant. And that overcoil hairspring, which is a Breguet overcoil shaped by hand, allows the watch to keep a very even time no matter what position it's in. That's the advantage of an overcoil. Its mass is centered. And it is a blue oxidized niobium zirconium alloy that is highly anti-magnetic. So shock resistant, water resistant, and anti-magnetic. And you can wear it as a dress watch. Reach out to Team Also at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.